A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. During the years of unrest that followed the Civil War, a powerful secret organization called the Legion of the Black Arrow sprang up in the western United States. Its members were to be found everywhere, defying the law or using the law for their own purposes, working toward the ultimate goal of revolt and the foundation of a despotic empire. It was the masked rider of the plains who led the fight against this band of outlaws and traitors. And for once, his great strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness were taxed to the utmost in the cause of democracy. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver, on the trail of the Black Arrow. Hail, Silver! Hooray! The Lone Ranger and Tonto made their way through the night on foot. Behind them lay the town with the light still gleaming in the windows and the doors of the cafes. Ahead, the woods were dark. Just as well we left the horses in camp, Tonto. The conversation we heard, Silver is fairly well known in this community. Mm, that's right. Silver plenty well known. This makes three evenings we've spent in town. Still not a hint about the identity of this unknown girl. Uh, I want to know her. I want to know where she gets all of her information. Uh, girl know you. That's it. She seems to know just about everything I do. She wants to send word to me. She knows just where to send it. Yet she takes great pains to hide herself. No one in town know any new girl. Yet she must be in town. She can't have been there long. Just recently that we first heard from her. Not right. I got this disguise off now and put my mask back on. Are you spending more time around town? You ride? First thing in the morning. Not good. Otto. Not silver. Him some warning. I wonder if he could have heard us. Come on, there's some reason why he wanted. Camp not far now. Break to the left. I'll go to the right. Come into camp from two sides in case there's a reception committee there. Ah. And keep as quiet as you can. As the Lone Ranger approached the camp, he heard the great white stallion cry out a second time. The masked man increased his speed, slipping through the undergrowth, the ease of an animal. And then suddenly, the unmistakable sound of hoofbeats fading into the night was heard. Someone riding away. Silver, what was it, fellow? Who was here? What did they do? Move right away from here. You see him? No, I didn't see a thing. Or someone here. I know. There's not a chance in the world of following that horse through this woods tonight. Even in daylight, it'd be hard to find tracks. Not right. Silver's mighty upset about it. Steady there, old boy. He's easy now. Uh, scout all right. He's not as high strung as Silver. I know we may draw a lead, but we'll take that chance. Build up the fire. Uh, time to fix it. Took some clever work on someone's part to locate this camp. Not right. There now, Silver. It's all right, big fellow. It's all right. Uh, no one near camp now. No? Anyone near, Silver not calm down like that. But who was here and why? Tell me, have fire soon, and maybe we see. Here. Hold on, Silver. What's this around your neck? What you find there? String with a bit of paper tied to it. How's that fire coming along? We've got to have light here. Uh, me got it pronto now. now look here. Uh, they are flame now. 
Otto, well, we've spent three evenings in town looking for the girl who wrote those notes. She's come here and left us another. Uh -huh. It was that girl whom we heard riding away. And now you read note. How do you like from fire? Yes, Tonto. Uh, let me take a look around. Only one who can do it. Dangerous. Uh, him take plenty of interest in girl. Oh, uh, here. Your footmark. Small mark. Small girl. Uh, scout. Maybe better we get a long way from here. Otto. Uh, what matter? I still wonder where this girl gets her information. Uh, me not know. I wonder how reliable this information is. I don't know whether to act on what she's told me or not. Kimosabe, if what this girl has written is true, there's going to be the worst frame-up that's ever been attempted. She's mistaken. That doesn't matter so much. We can't let these plans go through. Mm -hmm. What we do? We'll saddle Scout and Silver. Hurry, it may be too late now. Where we go? We're riding for the Bar C Ranch, where the son of the sheriff lives with his bride. And Tonto, we've got to hurry. At 10 o'clock that evening, young Jack Collins, the owner of the Bar C Ranch, was pacing up and down the living room of the ranch house. Ever since supper, he had been silent. From time to time, his wife looked up from her sewing, and when the lines of worry in his face seemed to deepen, she put aside her work and tried to find out what was wrong. Please don't ask me what's wrong, Jane. But I want to know, Jack. You've been pacing the floor like a caged cougar all evening. Are you worried about your paw? No. Pa's been sheriff long enough to be able to handle anything that turns up. You are worried about him. Those two men he's holding in the jail, isn't it? No, I tell you, Jane. Please don't worry about him. I know that there's been a lot of pressure brought against your Pa, but... There has. Some pretty important men have been trying to make Pa drop the charges against those men in jail. But he won't do it. Yeah, I wonder, maybe, if he wouldn't be better off to do what's asked of him. Of there's... course he wouldn't. How long he'd be able to hold up his head if he let himself get bulldozed into turning crooks loose just because some rich men say so. Well, those rich men can fight hard. So can my paw. Well, then stop fretting about it. Jane, I tell you, I'm not fretting about him. Oh, right then, Jack, but you needn't speak like that. Why, I'm sorry, Jane. I guess I'm not myself. Oh, why don't you turn in? It's way past 10 o'clock. <laughs> so you can worry all by yourself? No, no, I... I I want to do a little figure of plan. Oh, my goodness, who'd be calling at this time of night? I guess it's Jeremy. Evening, Jack. Come on in, Jeremy. Reckon I should have made apologies for calling this late. I wouldn't have, only you told the missus? Well, I... Tell me what, Jeremy? Oh, thunder, there I go again, talking too sudden. Well, what is it? May as well tell me the rest now. Jack has been worried about something, Jeremy. He wouldn't tell me what it was. Jane, you never had much use for never me. Never mind so. that. What are you here for? Well, I'm only trying to help Jack, that's all. Why? Huh? I said, why are you trying to help Jack? You never were interested in him or in his paw. You never were interested in anything if you weren't paid for it. Well, I... Oh, it's only that I don't like to see a fine young girl like you meet up with misfortune, that's oh, all. That's nonsense. What's the real reason? It's about time I was told a few things. Now, you sit down there, Jeremy Hager. Jack, you sit there. Now, Jane... Sit down. Well, all right. You may as well have the whole story. I told you there were some men that were trying to make Paul let those crooks out of the jail. I know that much. Get on from there. Jeremy heard that there was a scheme to abduct you. Abduct me? That's as I have it, ma'am. By getting you, they got the notion that maybe Jack Spard let those crooks go free. Where'd you get that information? Uh, I can't tell that, Miss Jane. I... Have you heard any more about it, Jeremy? Well, I, um... Go on. Well, fact is, I did hear some more about it, Jack. The stunt is to be tried tonight. They've got a stranger coming from out of the county to do the trick. Oh. Have, huh? Oh, of all the crazy fool ideas... <laughs> This is about the thinnest yarn I ever heard woven. Jane. Oh, Jack, you believe anything. <laughs> I don't see nothing funny. Well, I do. And it's for you, Jeremy. Here, put the shooting iron down. Not till I've used it to chase you on your way. And listen to me before you go. You get back to the crooks that paid you and tell them the story's too thin. You don't take no stock in it. Jack's father won't turn those men loose on the strength of a threat as flimsy as that. 
And I think the talk of trying to kidnap me is a lie. Oh, you think that, eh? Well, yes, I be... do. In the first place, the sheriff wouldn't be bulldozing any such way. In the second place, I've lived around here all my life. They couldn't get far without me finding friends. Jane, you don't know. Oh, don't I? In the third place, I can handle a gun as good as any man around here. They think they can pick me up and carry me away without having a fight in our, their hands. They better think again. Bringing an outsider for the job, are they? Well, they'll need more than one outsider. More than a dozen. Now get out of here. Get! Well, if that ain't gratitude, well, you'll find out that I'm telling a straight story. Jack, you step outside with me and I'll tell you what I wanted to out there. Jane, you cool off. I'll be back in a minute. Don't pay no attention to what Jeremy says. He's no saying... harm in listening. I'll be right back. I don't know as I should bother my head about you or your wife after being talked to like that. Jane never did like you, Jeremy. Don't pay attention to her. She thinks nothing can happen to her, and she don't fear man the beast. Uh, she don't know how these crooks can scheme things. Why, they got it work so that just one hombre, a stranger, comes along and asks for a place to sleep. Uh -huh. I figured they had a slick scheme like that. Ain't no doggone well at Paul do most anything and have something happen to Jane and me. Jack, listen to me. Do you see something moving over yonder? Seems like... One man, ain't it? Looks to be. It is. That's the scheme. That's it, Jack. You got to act fast now. Don't give that killer no chance at all. You didn't fetch your shooting iron, did you? No. I... Well, I got mine. Wait now. That's the way it was schemed. He was to come like that, get inside the house, and then get the drop on you. Here, Jack, take my gun. But I... Uh... Here. All right. I'll get a beat on him, but I won't shoot till I see who it is. <laughs> Jumping Maverick! <laughs> Jack got him! Jack got him! Look, he sprawled over yonder. So there wasn't no crook, huh? No scheme. Jack, you didn't shoot on sight. I didn't mean to. Jeremy, you shoved that gun in my hand, that hair trigger. It's all it. right, though, don't you, Savvy? You got the critter. Now get inside the house and I'll go find out how bad hurt he is. I'll let you know. You go inside the house and wait for me. I hear horses. You better get inside the house. Let me handle things. You'll handle nothing. I wouldn't trust you. I, I didn't mean to shoot him. We'll see how badly he's hurt. Come on, man. Oh, 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 What was that shot? Who's that on the ground? Hey, what's going on here? Here's Jack now. Hey, Jack. I seen the horse run away. It's Simon Bates. <laughs> man, what sort of business is this, Jack? Who shot this man? Well, I, I... You, Jeremy, what do you know about this shooting? Uh, Jack done it, I didn't. Why, you... This man is my cousin. He was to meet me. Your cousin? You stand back there. Take a look at him, boys, and see how bad he's hurt. Mr. Bates, he's dead. Dead? You... You did this. And I, now, look here, Simon. I, I didn't mean to you shoot him. You always I... did hate me. Tried a dozen times to show that my bank and methods weren't on the level. So now you're trying to hurt me by shooting my cousin and him without a gun drawn. Jeremy, tell Simon how it happened. Me? I ain't saying a doggone thing. I ain't getting mixed up in no murder charge, Jack. Oh, I'd like to help you, but doggone it all. You know it was you that shot him. Why, you double... Answer me, Jack. Did you shoot him? Yes or no? Yes, but That's I... all I want to know. Heist your hands. But listen to me, Bates. Jeremy told don't me... Don't you rope me in on this. I don't care what Jeremy told you. My cousin was coming here to help me put over a deal. I see the whole scheme. You wanted to hurt me. Like as not, Jeremy told what he knew of my plans. So you were here laying in wait, knowing that my cousin had to pass this way. Simon Bates, you know that's a pack of lies. I know what I hear. You heard your husband confess to murder. Anything else he's got to say, he'll have to tell to the jury. I reckon your pa will sure be miserable locking his own son up to stand trial. Now heist your hands and march. You are under arrest. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. An hour later, the sheriff was awakened by a heavy pounding on the door of his house. At first, he thought it was only the prisoners in the jail who had been making all the trouble they could. Then he realized there was someone demanding admission to his home. Yeah, fine time of night. And I like this lantern. It's past midnight. All right, all right. Hold your horses. I'm coming. <sighs> Wonder what's happened now. Fine time for a company. Well, Simon Bates. You called it right, Sheriff. And I'm coming in to have a little talk with you. Can't you wait till morning? This won't wait, Sheriff. Well, come on in then. Well, you wanted me, Bates. If it's about them crooks in the calaboose, what I told you the last time still stands. They're in jail till their trial. Dropping no charges against him. Maybe you'll change your tune when you've heard what I've got to say. Huh. So you make another play, eh? Well, it's no good, Simon. No. Sit down, Sheriff. There's no need to sit down. Say your say standing. Then clear out and let me get back to bed. You'd better sit down to listen to what I've got to say. How would you like to hang your own son for murder? But say that again. I said, how would you like to hang your own son, Jack, for murder? Hmm. What's the frame-up? But I warn you ahead of time, you can't make it stick. Oh, it'll stick. It's no frame-up. He confessed to it. That's a lie. <laughs> Sorry, Sheriff, but it's the truth. You don't have to take my word alone. You can ask the seven men who are with me when he confessed to the murder. Jack's never hurt anyone in his life. Well, he wouldn't even shoot a horse thief. No? Well, he shot my cousin. Uh, speak your piece, Simon. It was only about two hours ago, over near his ranch. What is your cousin doing there? Housebreaking? Never knew he had a cousin. Oh, yes, I had one. He was coming to work with me. Mm. Well, you know the rest. Maybe you'd like to have what I said verified by your own son. Simon, I wouldn't believe a word of it unless Jack does admit it. That's what I figured. Just a minute. Hey, bring the killer in here. Go on, you heard what was said. Well, go ahead and tell the sheriff the true facts. I'll tell him. You others can wait outside. All right. Oh, Jack, let me have the truth in your own words. You see, too, I get the whole truth. You get the whole truth, all right. It started when Jeremy came, warning me of a plot to kidnap Jane. He came back again tonight to, to say that the truck was coming from somewhere outside. So I didn't have a chance. He, he shoved his gun into my hand and went off. And we found that the man who was shot was Simon's cousin. Uh, Simon? Sounds like a frame-up scheme. <laughs> You think a jury would believe I'd fix a frame-up that'd mean the death of my own cousin? You'd do anything to get what you want. Anyway, Sheriff, I reckon the facts that Jack just gave you wouldn't hold much water in front of a jury in the face of the story me and my friends would tell. You're no fool, Sheriff. You know what a jury would do. Yes, I know. That's why I came here first. I thought you'd want to talk the whole thing over. Mm. What's on your mind? Well, my cousin's already gone. Hanging your son won't bring him back. Mm. I figured that I'll help you if you help me. That's fair enough, ain't it? That's about what I thought was to come. Right now, the only ones that know what happened are my own friends. They'll keep quiet if I say the word. Uh -huh. What you're getting at, Simon, is this. I turn your crooked friends out of the jail, and you say nothing about what Jack has done. Is that it? Well, that's one way... You listen to me, you ornery no. polecat. If Jack's committed murder, he'll pay for it the same as anyone else. Let go of me. Are you loco? No, I'm not loco. I think you're trying a slick game of double-cross framing. Uh, first place, I'm not so sure there's been a murder. But, Paul, you, I... you shut up. When I see the dead man, I'll believe there's been a murder. And I'll have to have a heap of proof that Jack's the guilty one, and not that cow-tow and slinking Jeremy. But if Jack is guilty, he'll go on trial the same as anyone else. Same as those two that are in the jail. All right, Sheriff. Now get out of here, and fast. I'm sorry you feel that way, Sheriff. Mighty sorry. I'd hate to see Jane wearing black. It'd be right hard on the poor girl to have her husband hanging from a rope. Jack's not hanging yet. Not even under arrest. You ain't arresting him, but you... Not till I see the corpse. All right. You'll see the corpse. You'll see that in the morning. Simon joined his men, spoke a few words softly, and the group moved away in the darkness. Meanwhile, at Jack's home, Tonto was speaking to Jane. The girl's look of despair gave way to one of hope, then one of amazement. And, <laughs> and you mean the... There was really no one killed? That's right. It's all frame up. Let me tell you about it. Ranger get note. Tell a scheme for tonight. Then Lone Ranger and Tonto ride out in plain. We go two miles. Then keep on our own horse. 
There's a man riding toward us, Tonto. He's the one we want. Steady, Silver. Oh, Scout. Oh, Father. Oh. Rain up there. We want to talk to you. What's up? Nothing. That's why we're stopping you. Simon's scheme is going through as planned. Who changed things? I'm changing them right now. Take him, Tonto. Get back there. I'll... Oh, my hand. That's enough gunplay. You busted my hand. No, I didn't. Get that rope on him, Tonto. Oh, it takes a bloody I see here. What's the idea of this here, anyhow? You're the man on the strawberry roan. Well, ouch. Them ropes are tight. Me make them plenty tight. You're the man who was to take part in a little frame-up. The man who was supposed to be shot by a blank cartridge so an innocent man can be framed for a crime that never happens. Now, see here. Who are you, anyhow? Who squealed? What are you going to do? I'll answer that last question. Hip. Now, get off. No. I'm riding your horse and taking your place. Take charge of Silver and the prisoner, Toto. Now, Toto, do it. Come on there. <laughs> Lone Ranger fellow who fall when Jack shoot. The Lone Ranger? Huh. And there was a blank in Jeremy's six gun. Not right. Why, those scheming crooks are even worse than I thought they were. Not right. They didn't know who was to come here then? Only know him ride Strawberry Roan. Did the Lone Ranger have his mask on? No, him wear disguise on face. No mask. So those crooks carried him away thinking he was one of the gang. Ah. And when the right time comes, he'll give the whole frame up away. <laughs> oh, golly, I hope I'm on hand to see the look on Simon's face. <laughs> uh, look here, Tonto. Uh-huh. There must be a lot of important things behind those men in jail. If Simon would go to all this trouble to get him free... The crooks from outside the county are sent in here to help with the schemes. Not right. There is something big behind the prisoners. Some powerful, important reason why Simon don't want them to stay in trial. Ah. Oh, someone outside. I hope it's... Jack! Jack, you're safe! Sure I am. Paul owned me a horse to come back on. You wouldn't believe, Hurry, Simon. Hurry, Jack, I've got so much to tell you. Leave the horse there for a minute. There's an Indian here. What? Tondo, a friend of the Lone Ranger. And Jack... Nobody was killed at all. Oh, nobody killed? No. The Lone Ranger learned of the scheme. It was all a frame-up. Paul had a hunch it was something like that. He told Simon that before he'd take any action at all, he'd have to see the dead man. And there isn't one. <laughs> oh, it'll be priceless when the Lone Ranger tells those crooks he's not going to play their game. Where is he? Oh, I've got to tell you the whole story. He and Tonto captured the man who was supposed to be shot. The Lone Ranger took his place. Wait. Jane, the Lone Ranger took that man's place? Well, Jack, what... Jane, Wait. Let me think. Oh, what's the matter? Pa told Simon I'd not even be held until he saw the corpse. And Simon promised to show him that dead man in the morning. Uh, oh. oh, what that? You mean Simon may be shoot? Where's Simon now? I don't know. Where gang hide? Where gang may camp? I, I don't know that either. Jack, don't shoot the Lone Ranger. And those men will all swear that you confess to the murder. Then your own father will... Oh, Jack, Jack, you've got to do something. Here you come. We ride this way. Scout Silver! I'm with you. Hey. Who's that on the paint horse? That's the man who placed the Lone Ranger took. You get off horse. Look out. We want horse. I'll get you for this. If only my hands wasn't tied. You girl. Yes, yes. Take gun. Keep guard on this crook. Me, me lead Silver. I'm with you. You come. Get along there. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. <laughs> Now, look here, partner. Are you sure the boys over in Hawksville figure you're to go on south from here? They don't expect me back there. I see. Well, you've done a good job so far. They sure made young Jack and his wife think you were shot. That wasn't hard with Jeremy's help. Simon, i better clear out to the south, too. The sheriff might take a notion to ask me questions. Yeah, we'll get you away from here, Jeremy. We can't take risks. we got a plenty of risks right now, Simon. I know. Men in the jail have told me what's what. There ain't nothing going to change their minds. No. You either get them out of that jail or they'll tell all they know. Can they back up what they tell? They can. They can tell enough to tie Simon into the Legion of the Black Arrow and show that he's handled things at his bank so that everyone in town's busted to get cash to do the work for the Black Arrow. Can't those men be shut up in some way? Uh, they will be if they can be got out of jail. We can't get them while they're there, though. Look, Simon, I understand that the sheriff wasn't to be talked to at all about tonight's affair, I mean. He don't think there was a shooting. He had a hunch it was all framed up. Oh. But when he sees there really was a man killed, I reckon he'll change his tune. But there really wasn't anyone killed, Simon. There will be. Huh? Grab him, boys. Just okay. a minute. No, hang on to him now. I thought you'd have something like this in mind, Simon. It ain't that I got anything against you, partner. But I've got to get at those men in jail, and the only way I can do it is to bring the sheriff around. Well, I suppose it's for the good of the Black Arrow. Yeah. You sure seem all fired calm about it. Maybe you didn't savvy. Sure I did. You're going to shoot me to show the sheriff a dead man. Put the blame on his son. 
That's simple enough, isn't it? Suffering sassafras. This critter ain't human. You, you ain't objecting? What good would it do to object? You have me outnumbered about nine to one, haven't you? Uh, yeah, sure. Besides, you're talking about the fellow who came from Hawksville. Uh, yeah. And he's the one to worry. He's the one. You mean... But you... You ain't the man? No. But that horse, I seen it run away. It looked when like... When Jeremy fired, I was on the strawberry roan. The fellow who had ridden from Hawksville met a couple of men who captured him. What? One of them took care of him while I came on riding his horse to learn more about your scheme. You... You ain't... You... Well, who and Sam here you are see, you? Simon, we weren't sure why you were so eager to get those men out of jail. We wanted to get the truth. So I came here to help get it. Well, by Juniper, we gotta have a corpse. And if the other gent ain't here, you'll have to do. I wouldn't try it. Hey, he's broke free. Take this one. Oh, no. Grab it. Get a gun on him. No, you don't. Not that way. Let me get him. Swing him this way. Logan, boy, take him. Come on, fellas. Hold on, that gun. This is Sheriff. We got you surrounded. Give up or we'll wipe you out. I give up. I surrender. I quit. Don't shoot. You two, stand back. You're both covered. Don't. Don't hit me. I'll take that gun, Jeremy. We give up. This critter's like a wildcat with his fist. Well, now that's better. Yeah, how bad Simon hit. He'll come to in a minute. I followed you, mister, with a couple of deputies. I, I thought you would, Sheriff. Did you hear enough? Yes, sir, we, we heard a plenty. I was going to close in before you got to fighting. But you went into action so sudden, took us flat-footed. Well, <laughs> looks like the fight's all gone out of you, Jeremy. Oh, don't let him near me again, Sheriff. I'd sooner be on the receiving end of a 44 slug than them fists again. Cracky, mister. I don't know why you bother to wear them six guns. Your fists are a sight more painful. There they are. You all right? Everything is all right, Tallow. That's still there. Good. I've learned how there's a stronghold of the Black Arrow. Stay in the saddle. We're heading for Hawksville. Wait, we gotta thank you. Get him up, Scout. Hello, Zul. Hi. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs> <laughs>